Welcome to the online version of our basic Skywarn training from the National Weather Service in Binghamton, New York. I'm Dan Padavana, and in this training session, I'll be taking you through the basics of Skywarn training. Keep in mind that this Skywarn training is divided into three separate videos. If you're interested in free National Weather Service data sent directly to your phone or to your computer, you can get the NWS widget for free. Go to google.com and search for NWS widgets. This widget will work with Android, Galaxy, and iPhones, as well as your computer. Here's a brief overview of what we'll be going through over the three videos which comprise online Skywarn training. Some things to keep in mind. A lot of information will be presented here and don't expect to be able to absorb everything in one training session. We want to give you a bit of science so that you understand why storms occur, but our main goal is that you report severe weather when it happens to us. So enjoy the class, but pay special attention to what to report, how to report, and when. Let's start with an overview of the National Weather Service nationwide. The blue dots represent where National Weather Service forecast offices are, and there are 121 weather forecast offices. There are also 13 river forecast centers, nine NSEP centers, six regional headquarters, and the National Weather Service headquarters. To zoom in on our area of responsibility for the National Weather Service in Binghamton, we cover 24 counties stretching as far north as Boonville in northern Oneida County, going all the way south to Hazleton in southern Luzerne County, as far east as Oneonta, Monticello in Delhi, and as far west as Bath, Penyan, and Corning. We are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, including holidays. In total, we serve about two and a half million people in our forecast area. Skywarn is a national volunteer program which is run by the National Weather Service, and Skywarn's goal is to provide National Weather Service forecasters with ground truth reports of significant weather. So for instance here you can see some three inch diameter hail collected and observed in South Otsilik, New York in 2011. Here's some wind damage from East Syracuse, New York, and when you see these types of weather phenomena we would like you to report them to the National Weather Service. So how do weather spotters help the National Weather Service? Well your real-time reports assist the National Weather Service in our warning decisions and you help us gauge how severe storms are. Your information may be a reason a warning is issued in the first place, and you will provide credibility to a warning. You could help provide the citizens of your community with potentially life-saving information. Skywarn provides the backbone of emergency communications, and the trained eye of the storm spotter is still our greatest asset. Your spotter reports help people perceive the threat as being real. For instance, many people, even when they hear a severe weather warning, whether it be for flooding, tornadoes, or high winds, often don't think that the threat will affect them. They simply perceive that the storm will hit a different part of their town or a different community, that somehow that they will be unaffected. However, when they actually hear ground truth, when they hear that quarter-sized hail has been reported in their town by a trained spotter. When they hear that a creek nearby has risen out of its banks, they perceive the threat as being real, and they will in turn act accordingly and take the actions necessary to save their lives. Spotters help to save lives. Doppler radar, despite the fact that it is very accurate in finding severe weather, has its limitations. If you take a look at the picture on the right side of the screen, notice that the curvature of the Earth affects how radars sample storms. A storm close to the radar will only be seen in the lower third, whereas a storm far away from the radar may only be seen in the middle or even the upper third of the storm. Therefore, no radar can sample an entire thunderstorm. 
a very high percentage of our tornadoes in our region are very weak. In fact, we estimate it to be about 80%. These tornadoes are very subtle with their signatures in the radar, and therefore we really do need your real-time reports to tell us what's going on with the weather. Your real-time reports are absolutely necessary for our warning operations, so make your reports. So let's get into some basic definitions. A watch means the conditions are favorable for a weather event in and close to the watch area. A watch does not necessarily mean that that weather is currently occurring. If you think of ready, set, and go, a watch would be ready, whereas a warning would be go. Go means that the weather event is imminent or occurring in the warning area right now. And these warnings come directly from us, the National Weather Service in Binghamton. A severe thunderstorm is a storm which produces hail of one inch in diameter or larger and or wind gusts of 58 miles per hour or stronger. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air pendant from a thunderstorm which is in contact with the ground. On the other hand, a funnel cloud is the same thing but it is not in contact with the ground. It exhibits rapid rotation and is most often smooth in appearance. A spotter hypothetically might begin the weather spotting day by taking a look at our National Weather Service Binghamton homepage. As you can see in this slide, the National Weather Service forecast is also available from this page by clicking on the left boxes and typing in your city and state. You can also type in your zip code to get the same information. Our map will be highlighted if there is currently watches, warnings, or advisories in effect. Also take a look at the arrow pointing toward current hazards. If you click on this link, you will find our hazardous weather outlook. And the hazardous weather outlook tells you what we're thinking about for hazardous weather today as far as timing and the type of severe weather that we're expecting. Hazardous weather outlook also goes out for the next seven days, which is very good for planning. So what causes thunderstorms? Well, we need moisture, instability, and lift. Think of these three items as like a recipe. You need all three to be complete. Moisture sources include the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and even the Great Lakes. Instability is caused by the difference between cold air aloft and very warm air near the surface. The sun heats the ground, and then the ground heats the air above, and as it rises, it encounters the colder air in the atmosphere and continues to rise even faster. Daytime heating is one way to warm up the lowest layer of the atmosphere. The two most basic lifting mechanisms are cold fronts and warm fronts. Cold air is more dense than warm air, and therefore warm air is forced to rise up when cold air advances. In the case of a warm front, warm air is advancing, but because it is less dense than the cold air, it tends to rise up and over the cold air, and therefore thunderstorms can form this way too. Terrain features, such as mountains, also cause lift. If you can imagine wind heading at a mountain range, wind will have no choice once it collides with a mountain but to go straight up, lifting moisture and warm air with it. And for this reason, we often see clouds and even showers and thunderstorms forming over the tops of mountains. Let's start to take a look at the thunderstorm life cycle. It begins with the developing stage, which is simply a towering cumulus cloud. This is all updraft, winds and air moving straight up and forming the clouds to form. Eventually, the storms begin to produce precipitation in the upper portion of the cloud. Think of this as like a baby storm. At the thunderstorm's mature stage, there is a separate updraft and downdraft. 
The downdraft reaches the ground, pulling rain, wind, and hail down with it. There are some visual cues you can use when you're in the field spotting storms to determine how severe a storm might be. Take a look at the difference between these two storms. The storm on the left has a very wispy appearance to it, whereas the storm on the right has a very hard, crisp shape to it. The storm on the right is showing a much stronger updraft. This hard appearance, or cauliflower look, is very indicative of severe storms and strong updrafts. Going back into the thunderstorm life cycle, here is the dissipating stage. At this point, the rain is falling directly down into the updraft, and this is causing the downdraft to completely choke off the storm. No warm and moist inflow is making it into the storm anymore, and the storm begins to die. When it comes time to report severe weather to the National Weather Service in Binghamton, we give you several options. The first is to call us on our 1-800 number. That phone number is 1-800-759-2992. And if you have trouble remembering the 759, you can remember it as SKY, S-K-Y. When you do call us, we want you to tell us four different things. The first is that you are a trained Skywarn spotter, and this allows us to take more confidence in your reports. Number two is we want you to tell us what you saw, whether it be a funnel cloud, a tornado, hail of a certain size, or wind damage. Number three, where did you see it? For instance, Endicott, Binghamton, Syracuse, Avoca. What time did you see it? 6.45 p.m., five minutes ago, etc. Another way to give us your storm report is to email us at bgm.stormreport at noaa.gov. And we ask that you tell us the same four things as you would if you were calling us. Another way to report severe weather is by visiting us on Facebook. You can also make your report by visiting NWS Binghamton on Twitter. We recommend that you use the hashtag BGMSpotter when reporting severe weather on Twitter.